Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and this is part two of our ice dye experiment. Just like the other shirts, I'm going to scrunch the shirt in here nice and tight. And I do have a link down below for all of the tools that I use. I found these adjustable colanders on Amazon and they were a two pack and a really good price. So when I feel like I have the shirt scrunched the way that I want it, I'm going to set it aside and work on the other shirt. The other shirt is going to just be a good old fashioned liquid dye, so I'm going to scrunch it up and I'm going to secure it with rubber bands. I got these new rubber bands off Amazon and I'll put a link for them down below in the description box, but I really like them. They're nice and stretchy and they're kind of big, not too big though. So you'll notice right here that when I place this rubber band, the shirt wants to curl up. I call that tacoing up. You don't want it to do that. So just stretch the rubber band out and also by placing more rubber bands, it takes all the tension off that one band and it sort of relieves it so it stops folding up. You don't want any of your projects, spirals, scrunches, doesn't matter what you're doing. You never want your project to fold in on itself. You want it nice and flat. So now it's time for the fun part, adding the dye. And for this experiment, I made one batch and I split it in half. So for the sweet pea, I put four ounces in my four ounce bottle, and then I left the other four ounces in the 16 ounce bottle, and so on. So for the experiment, I'm trying to make it somewhat scientific. So I'm using half of the dye on the top side and the rest of it, the other half, on the back side. When doing scrunch dyes, I usually always start with my lightest color first because I'm layering it on. So I want the light color to be able to penetrate in first and then the darker colors layer up on top of that. I hope that makes sense.
Okay, now it's time for the fourth shirt in this experiment, and there's going to be ice involved. So I'm giving it a quick sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then I'm adding the ice. And it's roughly the same exact amount of ice as we did for the very first two shirts. Okay, so now we're going to do liquid dye over ice. If you remember in the first video, we did dye over ice, but we did it in the powder form. So we're gonna see what results we get by doing it this way. And since I'm not flipping the shirt over, I'm going to be putting the entire four ounces of each color onto this shirt. So if this wasn't an experiment, I would probably not do such a large amount of liquid. It doesn't seem necessary, but I'm trying to keep it equal. So we'll see what happens. After all the ice melts, that's when I start the clock. You want to let these shirts batch for at least 24 hours. It's been about 30 hours because we had to wait for the ice to melt, so the other shirt got an extra six hours of batch time, but that's okay. So now it's time to rinse out our shirts. And as always, we start by using cold water and that's to stop any soda ash reaction that might still be going on in the shirt and gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs, you know, pretty clear. From here, it's gonna go into the washing machine on a hot water cycle. Then I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol, a textile detergent. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft to bring softness back into the fabric. And that's just my rinse out process. You can do it however you'd like, but you definitely wanna do hot water. Here they are guys. Here's our shirts after they've been washed and dried. And we got two totally different shirts. The liquid dye is much darker and uh, more crisp, I would say. Whereas the 
liquid over ice has a more smooth blend and I see a lot more of the raspberry in that shirt. You know, in the last video I said that I thought that the raspberry was throwing out the blue, but now I'm beginning to think that it might be the ultraviolet that's doing that. But it's unusual. I've never really had liquid dye throw other colors because remember, we have not added any blue to these shirts. So, I don't know. Which one's your favorite out of this set? I've added this picture here of all four shirts together. And as you can see, you can achieve so many different looks with only three colors of dye if you use your imagination and some creativity. The possibilities are endless. I'm just absolutely in love with this art form. I enjoy making tie-dye so much and I really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. So what do you guys think about all these? Go ahead and leave me some comments down below. Give me some feedback. Which one is your favorite? Have you guys done this before and have had similar results? I'm really curious to know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and it's really important that you click that bell for future notifications. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.